Hello everybody, I'm Solanima. And I'm Zathos. And welcome back to Support Conversations. Hey, Cory. Yeah? You, you know the Star Wars universe? What about the Star Wars universe? Do you know about it? Of course I do, who doesn't? Uh, probably someone in, in, uh, in Quebec. Sure. Okay. Anyways, like you're saying. My, my, my point is, um... Now, I remember I told you this a while ago, but I don't think our audience ever heard. But a long, long time ago, in a dream far, far away... Um, yeah, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> I, I had a dream where, uh, where we had just gotten done talking all night, like almost all night, about like KOTOR, because Kor wanted to go off on it and just talk about it. It's and I game. Did, and I didn't really have anywhere to put it, so I just kind of listened to it. Um, and so he was talking about his great, you know, great the characters were and all this stuff. And I, and I, and I got me thinking... You know, like if I were in the Star Wars universe, where would I stand in, in between it? And I realized that I'd probably lean pretty heavily towards Sith. Um, but that being said, I was thinking about Corey and the way that he f that he fights with our fighting games and whatnot. And I came up with, with, with a character for him if as if he. Well, you dreams as, of character. Didn't I kind of what? Did you say you saw, saw this character in a dream? You didn't really come up with it. Well, like it, it, I said, I dreamed up it. Okay, as I said, you came up with it. It's the same idea, isn't it? Well, dreams kind of unconscious. Like you didn't actually create it, but your mind cre created it, and then you're like, "Oh, that's well, it's my mind without. creating it, so it's me create whatever." Moving it's on. Not, it's not conscious creation, is what I'm saying. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> so the point is, let's not have that conversation. That would completely derail. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so the point is um, that uh, Corey's character was was a Jedi who carried three lightsabers with him and only ever pulled them out if he ever got serious. Up until then, he would just use the force powers, um, like force push, full pull, force pull, etc., etc., um, in order to deal with his opponents. And most of them were just deflections. Like, like they go to swing they go to swing their lightsaber at him, and he would just force push it away. Yeah, it's like very small, concentrated bursts of the force to yep. <clears throat> deflect blows and that kind of thing. And so, for me, my character, I believe, would probably... would probably start at the Sith, and then go learn from the Jedi, and then just kind of walk the middle walk the middle ground. Yeah. Um, and with that, actually, I think uh, from nothing about it, from your. Remember you telling me about this dream the first time, mm -hmm. and uh, he missed that I had three lightsabers on my on my belt, and I, I started thinking like, why would I have those if I wasn't using them? So I came up with the conclusion that they must be there so that if I want to get serious, I can pull all three out and just, just like levitate them and spin them around my body and stuff, and use yep. the force to. You know, kind of do some really crazy stuff with them. Yeah, and that, and, and, and that was that was the idea behind Corey's character. That kind of be like a Jedi version of Lambda. Sure, but for my character, something smells like it's burning. But anyways, from my from my character's perspective, it, um, I just walk the middle the middle line, um, yeah. in, in between the light side and the dark, uh, because for me, I see the appeal of the Sith and I also see the appeal of the Jedi, but I can't agree with them one hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> for me, it's, so, uh, so we, we never thought of it in the past. Uh, I always used to think that I'd lean heavily Jedi, mm -hmm. um, but more recently, it's after seeing, you know, watching the movies again and seeing, thinking more about it and playing some of the games, and looking more into like the lore of the Jedi and the Sith. Um, I feel like although I would lean uh, light side, um, I, just, I also I also couldn't agree with. There's a lot of things that the Jedi do that I don't agree with. Yeah. So so in so in my dream, there was like a Sith assassin sent sent, sent to fight. It's sent to kill Cory. Cory Cory blocks it with all that forest stuff and whatnot, and then I end up getting it between them. You know, so I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> you just didn't walk <laughs> past and. Yeah, I just walk like right between. It's excuse me. <laughs> no, um, that all the dream was. Yeah, pr pretty much it ends there. Like as that's as far as I can remember. Now the point is, um, a, f a handful of nights ago, I asked I I, ha I asked Cory, um, if we were in the Star Wars universe, and he was Jedi and I was Sith. Like I was a ma Jedi Master and you were Sith Lord. And would we still be friends? Yeah. To which Corey didn't really know the answer to. He's like, maybe. And like, then it's very, I. Very much depends and, on how if the dark side changed you and how much it changed you. And I thought, and, and I thought, I, was, I can just imagine it, where 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 where, where, where Corey's on like a desert planet. I don't know. The first thing that comes up is Naboo, but I don't know if that's desert. No, that's that's pretty lush planet. You're okay. probably more Tatooine for desert. Whatever, whatever. We go. We're on a desert planet. Um. And, and and we're both like in the same town in the market thing. And Corey's got his Padawan, and I've got my uh, I've got my apprentice. Um, and you guys come up with the with the race and genders. Odds are mine's probably going to be a girl, but who knows? 
Um, yeah, we haven't given that. We give that too much thought. No, well, I just thought I, I have an apprentice. We so assume end. that we we were both um, since we were both masters. We were training apprentices. Yeah. And paddles. And so and so as we go, uh, like 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 Corey ends up sensing my sinister connection to the forest, and I end up sensing his. And so we end up meeting each other in between, like like on the streets, and we, we you know we, we, we both kind of motion to fight away from the people, and when we do go to fight. Like, as our lightsabers are clashing and we're chucking four things, eventually both of our hoods get knocked off of our heads. And then I go, Corey? <laughs> and then, and then Corey is like, no, this is me. And then, like, we both, like, put our lightsabers away. I'm like, how you doing? How you been? We all well, are, are, I've had one of your apprentices, like, confused. <laughs> just really aggressively confused. Just like, what the fuck is going on? And then, and then, and then, and then we thought about it for a little bit. And I thought, would we make our own school from that? And please note that th this is without me knowing anything about the Star Wars universe. And I know, and I'm aware now that there are such things as gray Jedi's, but this is before yeah, I knew we, of it. We looked this up um, later because I was curious. Uh, and so, and so, and, and, and so I, and so I thought, I thought we should make our own, we would make our own academy with, with us being the first teachers and our apprentices and Padawans be, be, being the first uh, students and what we would do is that is that we would take we would take those who are force sensitive who like me still being connected to the Sith I would take I would take apprentices who failed their initiation but were still force sensitive like 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 they failed it on a moral standpoint or maybe even even, even just a physical attribute standpoint yeah or even and, ones that like turned away from the Sith because they didn't yeah. agree with the the path like I said moral standpoint yeah um and so I would take them and and, and bring them to, and bring them to our academy, um, you know, on, on, on the grounds of that, like I was taking them to shoot them off into space or something like that, you know, just yeah. just just you know, it's like oh he's he's just doing a garbage run, I guess, yeah. you know, and so but really I'm not, um, and so and then Corey being being a member of the Jedi would essentially do the same thing except with Jedi's. Yeah, which they, um, they wouldn't like for for those who. Who walks the path of life but don't agree with the Jedi Council necessarily? Mm -hmm. So basically, so, what ends up in, in the actual universe, are Great Jedi. And so, and so, and so, I was thinking that that we would create this academy, uh, <laughs> and and I remember I remember asking, I remember being asked by Corey, it's like it's like, what would we call our academy? And I said, or, I would call or our, like uh, our, our 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 school, our teachings. They are our teachings, like on a broader sense, like the light, there's like the Jedi, the Sith, and then like Wodar. Um, yeah, and, and, ideology and, be called. And I called it the middle road. Yeah, that's what we ended up agreeing on. And our picture, and, and, and I decided that our emblem would, 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 would be the middle finger. Because essentially what we were saying was fuck you to both to both Jedi and Sith. Yeah. Fuck you, we'll find our own way. This is, and I was like, I don't know, that might send the wrong message. This is a very aggressive message, but at the same time, it, people might have a hard time taking it seriously. And so, and, and and so, as we continued, as since since we already had a good idea of what it is that Corey's character was, we didn't really have a good idea of what my character was. And I figured that my character would be like this really jovial, happy-go-lucky type of person who still who has like a lot of darkness on the inside. Yeah, <laughs> um, like he, he can when he gets serious, he's got a lot of darkness he can unleash. But for the most part, he kind of keeps that down and out of the way. Just just really happy, just enjoying himself. And so making sand castles. As this, I'm about to get to that. And, yeah. and so, and so, as this continued, as this continued, <laughs> stop spoiling it, Corey. Sorry. And so, and I remember so, what so, we talked about next was uh, well, like, no, 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 how did the Jedi and Sith re react to our yeah, school? Yeah, and, and so, and so, so I was thinking that if the Sith reacted, uh, to like if they found out about me, they would probably send people to kill me. Yeah. And 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 I said, I said because of this, Corey, I believe that that that, that, that the two of us should never be apart. Because we both need to have each other's backs for this, yeah. and I was like, "Well, that's what the Sith would do." And I was thinking, "What would the Jedi do?" And I was thinking, yeah, well, I was... They, they, "They might be a bit more diplomatic." And so I was. Yeah, imagining... I felt like they would sit, they would seek to understand before making any decision about <laughs> destruction. And so I was imagining that, like, 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 Corey and I are off, or are, are on like another planet, like, I, again, like some another desert planet, because that's the only one I can think of. Like, let's say, let's say Luke's home. Okay, Luke's home. Sure. Um. 
and and so and so so that so these three Jedi elders, maybe maybe some of them are on the council. They 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 come out and they got their robes on and everything. The wind's blowing at them. They're looking all cool and they come and they address Corey directly. And they ask and they ask him, you know, for his reasons and whatnot of uh, for, for why it is that he was leaving. He explains himself fantastically, and they end up kind of understanding where he's going. And they have one question for him, which is which is why did he align himself with a Sith Lord? And and it's like it's like, it's like it's like it's like they have been known to be quite dangerous. And then like just over Corey's shoulder, I'm sitting on the ground, my legs spread, making fucking sandcastles yeah. in the damn dirt, going ah. Yeah, I'm just like, like, it's a long story. Like not using any force, just got like the bucket and shit. Yeah. I'm like, where'd you get the water? <laughs> Did you bring I mean, water with you just so you can make sandcastles while I'm talking to the Jedi Masters? I figured I'd be bored. And so. And it was actually really interesting. Um, and, and, and then we ended up talking about like, what techniques will we pioneer here at it, at, 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 the, um, at the academy. And we talked about how, how Corey would probably learn how to, how to like, manipulate his, his, his lightsabers with the force, probably at this academy. Like he wouldn't learn that prior. Yeah, um, like I was, as a master, but I was still using more conventional abilities. But then one, and, with the freedom of being able to explore more um, in the ways of the force, I, I uh, pioneered techniques like that. And for me, I always assumed that that, that that my character would be kind of juggernaughty, like really big, you know, like a big body, pretty tall. And I was just <laughs> like, thinking, like one of the few armor Jedi or armor Sith. Not, not 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 even armor, just big guy, just a okay. big guy. Like 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 I'm physic, like I'm six foot three naturally. I'm about a 320 pounds, so I'm assuming I'd be a big guy. Yeah. And so leaping and acrobatics aren't really my thing. So being able to dodge things isn't really in my expertise, which yeah, is why see, it is. See the, which is why it is that I figured that one thing that I would pioneer would be a gauntlet that would that would allow me to grab a lightsaber, like by the like by the by, by the saber. Yeah, um, or even like block blaster bolts. Yeah, and and the idea behind it is that <laughs> is that is that one nobody would expect it. Nobody would expect me to grab their lightsaber. There's a very high level of intimidation with that. <laughs> I'm going to say just I wasn't done talking. <laughs> And so what happens um, is that is, is that is that we then had fur further discussions about about like like how would our students <laughs> learn? And my mental image originally was that was that Corey would be in a classroom, like, you know, teaching teaching the, the the young ones who had joined us and talking about them and talk to them about how good control is of their emotions. Because he would teach them the Jedi ways, and I would teach them the Sith ways, and they would try to find a balance. And then my mental <laughs> image is just that Corey gets done explaining everything to them, and then they come over to my classroom. They all sit down, and I'm like, okay, forget everything he said. Who wants to shoot lightning? Yeah, <laughs> and we also talked about how, uh, like, oh yeah, yeah, how they be paired. Well, uh, against that, but uh, okay, we talked about how, uh, like, the, the Jedi always talk about uh, bringing balance to the Force, mm -hmm. um, and we were thinking about how maybe what, they're, what the, it's actually talking about is not a balance between Jedi and Sith, but a like an inner balance of, of the Force. Uh -huh. Which again is kind of like a great Jedi mentality, where the great Jedi believe that there there's no dark side and light side. It's there's just but, the force. But we discussed all of this but, but before even knowing what great what, what great Jedi yeah. were. Like, after our conversation, I looked up and I'm like, oh, this actually exists in the Star Wars universe. Not exactly the way we explained it, but in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, we also talked about how we we based the uh, the just like how uh, the Jedi have um, and it says both have like a master and student relationship. We said we'd have uh, we have partners like kind of like how we started. Like we're two teachers who are partners and who have stayed together. Partners who had a defense for the Sith. But also just because it, um, it's how we're at our strongest. Mm -hmm. So we decided that we take uh, the students who are like lightning and darkling, and we'd, we we pair them up and uh, you know, yeah. try and get them to um, into like two equals rather than a master student thing. Like 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 when the Sith when the Sith oriented apprentice would would let his emotions get out of control, the Jedi would teach him to regain control. And then when the Jedi couldn't let go, the the the, the Sith would teach him that. Yeah, Sith would the Sith teach the Jedi feel, and the Jedi would teach the Sith uh, to you know to be at peace, to be calm. Yeah, I think oh, I think we end up saying like our our motto would be like passion with peace. Yeah, or peace with so, passion, one way or the other. Something like that. But then, so, then we got into the idea of like, well, um, what's something we could do to help them uh, get to know each other and bond faster, since there's going to be some animosity between 
and, um, and, J Jay and Sith, obviously. And I, and, and I remember that, that, that stupid thing in school where it's like, you got to take care of this egg, you know, something like that. And I was like, I was like, what if we use something like that, except use something different? And so... I can't remember which was suggested, but one of us... I, I want to say that I was the one who suggested, because it sounds like something I would suggest, but... Yeah, but, but it's something I'd be 100% on board with, too. Like, second, yeah. if you just I'd be like, yes, that's perfect. <laughs> and so, and so, so, so we suggested that every group gets a puppy. Yeah, they get a puppy that they have to take care of. Yep. And that, that puppy becomes like the, the third part, like the third point of their their group. <laughs> so every that... every uh, group is two partners of equal power and a uh, and a dog. And a puppy. And yeah, a puppy. And and the or puppy. Just dog. <laughs> and the puppy eventually becomes force sensitive. Yeah, we eventually talked about that, like how yeah. the constant exposure to the to the force would eventually make the dogs force sensitive, and that'd be like our like kind of signature of our uh, of us. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you tell not you can see like uh, like two of our uh, uh, force users, you know, two people of the middle of the middle road, and you like, are they Jedi or Sith? And you see the dog come in, it's like, oh, they're in the middle road, <laughs> which is good. Yeah, uh, but uh... who knows? Maybe the force also. Uh, prolonged life of the dogs, so they could uh, <clears throat> actually live alongside yeah. their masters. Which is nice. I like the idea of that. Yeah. But moving on, um, so 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 we had a lot of um, ideas for it. Um, what I wonder is, uh, with the with the partners and um, like, I guess as a, as a starting point, would we ha end up having like a a force bond? Like, what do you mean? Well, I, I forget you haven't played the National Republic games. Nope, but in, in those games, they uh, in, in uh, both games, there's kind of a uh, this theme of uh, two characters having this bond with the Force. Okay. Where they uh, like it, it starts with like things like uh, sharing dreams of the of like past memories or future events. Okay. Like they both have the same dream, and uh, in the second game, actually, uh, th there ends up being some direct effects. Like it's, it's even more literal. Where uh, if one person gets gets her, like one person. Uh, gets her handcuff, and the uh, main character has a who at the point of that point doesn't know, but later on finds out, has a force bond with that character, uh, ends up feeling the pain of his hand being cut off. Okay. So there's like an actual physical bond, which ends up being and that kind of sucks, but at the same time, um, it ends up being helpful because you find out that any uh, any buff you cast on one will be automatically cast on the other. Oh, okay. So if you yourself like a like a use the force to give yourself an energy shield, then your partner will get it too for free. Yay. Okay. Well. Neat. I was wondering, I don't, like, do you I, think that would I, uh, I, I, come I, about? I, I would think that it might manifest in some, but not all. Yeah, it depends like, on how, how how close the uh, partners are, like how, how well they know each other. Yeah, and, and uh, part, part could be like an experience thing as well. And, uh, and 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 for me, like 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 when it comes to romantic involvement in between partners, I wouldn't condemn it, but I would definitely say approach it with caution. Yeah. Um, Which I think that's that's one of the things I disagree with the Jedi on. I don't think that romance should be forbidden, but I do say I think it should be approached with caution. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like when you love someone, you will go to any lengths for them, and when you go to any lengths for them, you throw out you you, you throw out logic. Yeah, I mean that's the entire reason. That's that's almost the entire reason why uh, Anakin turned to the dark side in the first place is uh, because of love. And which is bad, why the Jedi and, were always and, cautioning and, against it. And bad dialogue. He just couldn't take it anymore. He had to go evil. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> but the point is uh, that I remember one time I was I was talking I was talking to Corey like like like, uh, like if we were having like a sparring match between the two of us trying to show off, um, you know like like our abilities and our techniques and see if any of the students could 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 do it. And I would imagine that that, that we would be fighting a little bit and then we kind of have a break and then and then you know we'd break off of each other and then I'd be like I'd be like you see <laughs> you see Corey is a very adept. Uh, uh, uh Jedi fighter using both the Force and his lightsabers at the same time while keeping his body mobile. Now, <laughs> and then I like reach out and use the Force to grab one of the students. It's like now I've taken a hostage, <laughs> and yeah. and like I'd, I'd be like I'd be like giving a speech explaining how it is that 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 that, that you could never expect a fair fight out there. Um, in because, the meantime. Because, because, because people will play dirty in order in order to continue to live, and then and then, and then it's after an a while, that point. yeah, and then and then and then and then after a while, I was like, there's a there's a lightsaber behind me, isn't there? Yeah, I'm just like like floating a lightsaber just right behind you, I'm like, <clears throat> it's like you really th thought I didn't see that coming. <laughs> like like halfway through the speech, I was like, it's like people will do anything to keep themselves alive, and there's a lightsaber behind me, isn't there? Yeah, and. Then, <laughs> 
So the idea is that we just uh, we just have a lot of like back and forth, that kind of thing. Where we both know each other really well, so we're able to yeah, um, you know, pull off stunts like that. Yeah, and so and so so like I release a student and just and just kind of explain, you know, that 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 that, that you are here to learn, and and I will teach you and I will teach you through broken through broken bones if I have to. Yeah. And uh, and and with Corey's character, he's more you know less broken bony. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like like how we both come from different backgrounds. You know, you come from the same I come from the Jai, so we have different perspectives on uh, yeah. teaching the same lessons. <laughs> uh, that'd be fun. I, yeah. I I don't I also I also don't, don't, don't think we'd have an age restriction on when it is that that we would take in uh, young ones. You know? Yeah. Like if if you, you could be eight or you could be eighty, as long as you're willing to learn. <laughs> All you need to do, the only requirement is you have to be force sensitive. Since obviously yeah. you, you need to be able to use the force in order to tap into it. Yeah. Um, and th I think I think you told me about 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 like 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 th there's a lightning ability that the Jedi do. Oh yeah, it was uh, called like um, electric force judgment is what they okay. called it. Yeah, and and, uh, and uh, we it was were first talking used by about... I think it was his name was Plo Koon. And, and, and I remember I remember that that uh, that we were talking about like my character how like I'm always happy go lucky and kind of like I just re like really silly with always a big smile on my face. Yeah. And at the Sith Academy when I went to go shoot Force Lightning I shot that. Yeah, because you're, you're not reaching into any like <clears throat> hatred or anger to use it or, or, or malice. Like I'm just doing it. And yeah. I was like, is this supposed to be that color? <laughs> yeah, since uh, Electric Judgment is um, I, don't, I don't know what you have to tap into to use it, but. Uh, and the one who discovered it basically said that uh, when he used it, he didn't feel any anger or hatred or any kind of pull of the dark side. Yeah. So even though it resembled Force Lightning, it was a different color and it didn't require you to, um, to tap, tap into the dark side. It was a light side ability. Yeah. Which I thought was really cool. Yeah, which is... Which, 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 which yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah, know where I was going with that. Yeah, because our, our main... The main thing I was talking about is that... Uh, the the dark side it constantly talks about how the dark side is a corrupting power and it's very hard to break free from it. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, I was trying to figure out how you could be a, a Sith Lord without you know falling to the corruption of the dark side. So like, we figured like, that like and, and the answer is that I was never taken. Yeah, you learn from the dark from the Sith, but you never actually gave in to your anger. Mm -hmm. and you found ways to use those powers without uh, without uh, giving into it. Yeah, which is kind of like how I figured that you could. Teach me dark side techniques, cause like, hey, all I have to do is uh, take it from a different a angle. <laughs> just, just like, like I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you, uh, you, you know how the Jedi te teach you justice and all that good stuff? Yeah, yeah, those don't exist. <laughs> yeah. you just, you're like, what? I'd be like, nope, don't exist. But and what about that, don't exist? And one it's thing that just we, uh, a concept. One thing we never actually discussed in that little, it was like an hour long discussion we had about this. Mm -hmm. Um, I just kind of thought of just now. Uh, You'd be able to teach me how to tap into the dark, the dark side without actually giving into the uh, darker emotions. Oh, what can I teach you from the Jedi side? You probably teach me how to, how, to, how to tap into the light side without becoming a, a fucking prick. It's that's not how it works. Yeah, it is. Because as, as far as I've seen, there are no light side techniques that are that the dark side like the uh, Sith can't use. I don't know. At least I'm, not in the I'm, movies. Well, I'm. I'm, I'm... I'm assuming I'm, I'm assuming that the the the, 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 the with the like 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 this is the way I, I always felt the, the light side and the dark side's powers works with 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 the, with the dark side powers most of their strength comes com, com, comes with comes with things like force choke and force and force lightning and etc cetera, etc cetera. and 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 that was how it is that, that you learned how to control all three lightsabers that I just taught you the force choke but just use it on your lightsaber. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of, instead there, of there are examples and, of uh, and, and, and don't grip it so hard that you kill it, like that you that you smash it. It, it. Like 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 I would teach you how to grab it, but not strangle it. Yeah. Um, and there, there are like, examples though of uh, you know, of like dark side powers being used by a Jedi, like yeah. uh, like, even in the movies in the Return of the Jedi at the beginning, um, Luke uses Force Choke against uh, mm -hmm. like not not to kill but just to get the two the Gamorrean guards out of the way. Yeah. And, uh, uh, as far from the movies, that's the only example I can think of. And so, so what I was thinking is that um, is 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 that is that you don't see um, dark side users being very acrobaty, especially once they get up to master levels. Well, like, depends. I mean, well, Darth Maul. Fa Vader's not 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 very acrobaty. The 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 Emperor's not very acrobatic. Yeah, that's because the Emperor's old and the Vader's like half machine. 
Count Dooku is a very acrobatty. And, and Darth Maul's just an apprentice. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, we're not well-versed in the um, Star Wars lore. We're mainly just the movies, a few of the games. Maybe a little bit of reading up here and there on things like the Grey Jedi and <clears throat> Electric Judgment. Which, that was mostly you. Well, yeah, that's um, just me, because I'm like, it, does this exist? Yeah, it does. But 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 I I would assume that the Jedi were are much more pinpointy in in, in, in terms of their force you force use. So like yes they have push and pull but everybody fucking has that. Yeah. Like 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 which is why it is that you have like the Jedi mind trick where it's like you want to let us go and that's probably very pinpointy in order to do that trick. Yeah that's true. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a, a Sith use a mind trick. <clears throat> I'm not that, I don't, I don't know why, if it's impossible. Why trick them, their but... mind where you can just choke them? Yeah, <laughs> I guess that's more of the mentality. It's like there's you know uh, mind trick used for <clears throat> to reach dip diplomatic solutions and to you know, avoid fighting. <clears throat> where, uh, where Sith just use direct force. Which, that could be kind of the key between them, is that, uh... I would like to think, <laughs> I would like to think that they, that, 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 that one of the first lessons, you're like, alright, you need to cross this bridge, but this person is, is, is standing in your way. Go ahead and convince him to, to, to let you pass. And I just <coughs> push right, him to the other side of the bridge, and I'm like, what? He's out of the way. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, no, no, no. Try that again without... <laughs> without moving him from where he's standing or killing him. Okay. I'm out of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, I guess it's... I just uh, imagine that I just stare at him for like a good like 10 minutes. It's like, I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, like you, just start, you, you like failed to pass intimidation check. <laughs> it's like, he's not running from me. You know, like, that's because he's a dummy. Oh. He's mean to you, isn't he, Mr. Dummy? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you'll be my friend. <laughs> and then just like, <laughs> I just put my arm around his shoulder and just walk the other way. It's like, you're supposed to pass him on the bridge. It's like, nope, we're going for drinks. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I guess you could say like, uh... Yeah, partners with a goddamn idiot. Yeah, again, people can contradict us if, if this is not how the Force works, but, uh... By all means, like, we're <laughs> stupid, so... Yeah, I, love, I love that line from, uh, in, in the new Star Wars, where, uh... <clears throat> again, you haven't seen it, so I'm not going to spoil too much, but... Hey, you um, do it. The, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the, uh, Stormtrooper's name. Steve. Um, well, yeah, I can't remember his name right now, but whatever his name is. Um, Bob Sakavania. It's not that, but anyway, it's not important. Uh, I've only seen the movie a couple times, so I don't remember. But, uh, he says, like, uh, like, like uh, he's on, he's, like, plant side with, uh, with Han Solo. And the two of them are trying to figure out, like, what, what they're going to do in this big climactic scene and everything. Um, and then Han Solo finds out that this guy doesn't actually have a plan, even though he, th he thought that he did. Uh -huh. and it's like, no, no, don't worry about it, we'll use the Force. And then um, Han Solo just goes, that's not how the Force works. <laughs> just the way he says it. And then he, like, Chewie is like, behind him and it kind of makes a little sound. It's like, oh, really? You're cold? Because they're like, on this <laughs> snow planet. <laughs> Which is like the, like the one-two punch of those two lines together. That's not how the Force works. <laughs> oh, really? You're cold? <laughs> That's like one of my favorite lines. Uh, that's silly. It was very silly. So, yeah, like what I was gonna say before, though, is that um, maybe the idea of the different, the big difference in how the Force is used between Jedi and Sith is that the Sith are all about you know like passion and uh, grand displays of power, so you know they can unleash a lot of power. <laughs> Whereas Jedi are more about uh, peace, serenity, and <laughs> they're maybe more in, into the idea of like focusing their power. Yeah. Like like, 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 I, I, I don't know, like, like, I, I, I would imagine, I would imagine from you, like, I would learn the ability to concentrate force push into, like, almost needlepoint precision. Yeah. Where, like, 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 I could do pressure points, hit, pressure point hits from, from, from across the room. Yeah, that's something I probably tried to, uh, <laughs> try to, like, develop as well as... Just <laughs> and then, like, your arm's disabled, you're like, yeah. like, like, I dislocate your shoulder, and you're like, how the hell did you do that? I was like, I pushed. <laughs> you pushed a very like... fine point. Let me try. <laughs> <laughs> like it just it just bounces off my armor and you're like, please remove the armor. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. No, I like, probably just you, you're gonna do it in <laughs> Like, how does my force make a tink sound? <laughs> and then and then and then and then, like I take off like, like my robe and underneath my armor is another pair of is another set of armor. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, why do you have so much armor on? And it's like, cause I can't jump. <laughs> that's that's like a, that's like a backwards answer. It's, it's more like, why can't you jump? Cause I have so much armor on. 
Well, no, like, I already, I know I can't jump, so, like, oh. so you might as well just weigh yourself down even more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would you do, though, if you, like, what would be the first thing to do if I taught you the giant mind trick? <laughs> Go give me a cookie. <laughs> uh, you, like, try to use that, and it's like, it only works against the weak, uh, uh, weak-willed people. Yeah, I know. Why isn't it working on you? Shouldn't have to answer that. <laughs> I guess if you if you know how to use the, the force trick, or the, the mind trick, uh, you're not really susceptible to it. Well, unless like unless like it catches you off guard. Oh, well, even then. What do you mean uh, even then? Even then, you'd be, like you'd be trained to, to, you know, to resist that kind of thing. I would think. Because you recognize the sign. You could you could be trained to shoot a gun, but that doesn't mean you're resistant to the bullets. That's not the same thing. Yeah. It's... No, it's it's like it's. They never say like it's a matter of concentration or like resist, like having to consciously resist it. It's more just like if if a thing you're trying to use uh, mind trick on is uh, weak willed or weak minded, then you can use it on them. So well, I feel like, like force users are like automatically exempt from uh, mind like tricks. To, I would like to think I would like to think that that you try to use the mind trick on me and it just doesn't work and you're just like you're like like you were very strong willed at something and I'm like I really want to get a pony. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're like, that is the worst reason! <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, like, one week later I come in on a fucking horse! Like, like where did you even find that? Well, I found it on this weird blue planet! <laughs> Which planet is that? That would be, uh, that would be Earth, Cory. Well, I, okay. I thought you were maybe talk, trying to reference Equestria or something, which, I don't know if that's even a planet, or it's just a, there's a country or... No, the, 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 that's apparently a planet. Okay. Anyways, so I'm not a Bernie, so I don't know that stuff. But I don't I, know what I, you're telling I, I, me. I was like, I found this weird, uh, this really, uh, this really pretty blue marble in the in this in the in the Earth. <laughs> I mean, in, in the space. I think they call it Earth. <laughs> you're just like, did you did, did, did you, you steal go? from an undeveloped planet? It's not stealing if nobody owned it. <laughs> so those are wild horse. How? Do you even know how to break in a wild horse? Well, I just, I, I just did, I just did the thing you taught me. I guess that I makes said, sense. Just my I trigger. said, I, I said you want me to ride you, and he's cool. So he just like fucks you off. <laughs> he what? Like, like, he, like, I just, he's like, he's cool with me. And he just like kicks and like you go, go fly off the horse. Most of the time, <laughs> I imagine that he kicks and then like my head gets buried in the sand. I'm like, most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> this is really more anime every every time we talk about this. Yeah. I'd like to <laughs> I'd like to imagine that 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 that, that, that like that, that like, like like you're the person that most of the students come to for advice. You know, like 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 most like, of the time your advice is is, uh, is uh, insane. With some sense, it's, it's either insane or not helpful. <laughs> like it's like it's 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 like it's it's like <laughs> it's it's like <laughs> it's like uh so so <laughs> so Taylor, yeah? It's like, I seem to be having difficulty with this technique. Ah, have you tried fire? No? Well, go try fire. Fire how? Anywhere. <laughs> Some, that, that should help you out. <laughs> they come back, they got burn marks on their hands. It's like, that didn't work. Did you try it on your feet? No? So you know, learn, not to, learn not to trust you, or they just be like, oh, you say, you'd give advice, but it's completely unhelpful. Yeah. It's like, it's like I, I, I can't seem to figure out how do you... Like, I can't seem to master Force Lightning. I, I can't get more than the spark. It's like, why don't you try harder? <laughs> it's not helpful. <laughs> try harder how? I don't know. Clench your butthole. <laughs> you're just like, what? And then, and then you come in and you're like, please stop talking about my students' anatomy. I'm like, they're my students too. You're like, I really wish they weren't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we're I, idiots. Yeah, but we're having fun with these conversations. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I really hope people are putting in the comments like, 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 like what they think. Like, <laughs> would you guys, would you guys do 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 pretty good um, in, uh, in in our academy? Do you think? Yeah. <laughs> just, just out of curiosity. Hey, where would you find yourself in the Star Wars universe, and would you be interested in joining the middle path, the middle road? Yeah. We have at least one good master here. <laughs> I'm a fantastic master. People just don't understand me. Yeah. It'd be one of those things where, like, 
like, it needs never understood in his time. So like, like, uh, like century after you're dead, people will like review you as like the the great master of the Middle Road. Yeah. <laughs> I just imagine like uh, how you're doing, like building a statue of uh, of you in your honor. It's like it's like 20 feet tall, and it's just like you're flipping like doing a double middle finger. Yeah. <laughs> just fuck you. So yeah, that was a uh, that was fun. What do we talk about now? Do we have anything? Um. So that's most. That's pretty much all we had. Um. Going up to go on. How much time we got going so far? Huh? How much time we got going on so far? We're going about half an hour, maybe a little over that. Alright, uh, like we could stop it right there if you want. No, it's a little bit short. I'd like to go for about 40 minutes. Okay. If I can. I mean, well, the only thing I can think of is, uh. Well, on, on, on the subject of Star Wars, uh, Corey, let's talk about Mass Effect. Okay. Specific, specific, specifically, Corey. <laughs> When uh, when you first played through Mass Effect, uh, who did you who did you romance? Um, my first playthrough all the way all the way through. Uh huh. I'm trying to remember because I had like two places that kind of happened like side by side, and then there was one point where I finished Mass Effect one, but then I lost my save data, so I had to play through it again before I go to Mass Effect two. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember my my preferred romance option. The one I ended up going with was Tali. Mm -hmm. I like, don't recall if that was the like, first time or the first or second like, playthrough, though. Like through all three games, you just stuck with Tali. Uh, yeah. Again, I don't know if that was my first or second playthrough. All right. Well, I, I know one of my playthroughs I romanced Ashley in the first game, second game, and second and third game I romanced Jack. Uh, Jack. All right. So for me, I went through. Um, I've only been through one and two. Uh, and we started so, three. Yeah, sorry, three, but I don't, I barely remember anything. Yeah, I'll, I think I remember. I was asking the other day how far you got, and I, I think I remember you, you got to the point where Edie got her body. No, and and, and I and, and I did Jack's mission. Right. Yeah, I remember I did Jack's. Anyways, point is, um, but so, that's around the same time anyway. So in the in the first in the first um in the first game, I romanced uh, Liara, and then yeah. in the second game, I went with Tali, and then. Uh, Third yeah, game, no, you hadn't made your decision yet. No, like I, had, I had nobody. Uh, but you, you get far enough to really. Yeah. You, you haven't, even, haven't even met Tali in, in three yet. Yeah, I'm a, and and my character's a male Shep. Yeah. Uh, but I have to say that um, personally, uh, if I could redo it, I'd probably go with Samara. Is she actually an option? I'm not sure. Uh, in Mass Effect 2, you, you, you can't really, like, you can kind of sort of romance her, but it doesn't really happen. And then in Mass Effect 3, you, you can, you, you get as much as a kiss from her, and that's about it. Um, yeah. But, like, 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 like again, she holds to a code. Yeah. Um, and I think, I, 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 I respect that. You I know, think she, she remembers, she, like, when she swears herself to, <clears throat> to, to your service, that basically your code is her code, and that any order you give is, uh, like, over, supersedes anything that she, any of her code. Uh -huh. She mentions that, like, uh, you, you, you say something along the lines of, like, uh, either, so I can order you to, <clears throat> to sleep with me, so I can order you to to do whatever. And she's like, yeah. you couldn't, I would follow through. Of course, once I was um, out from under your service, I have to come back and kill you for it. <laughs> They're basically saying that she'll, doesn't matter what you say, she'll do it. But there might be reper repercussions later when she's no longer um, <laughs> under your code. <laughs> Which is funny. I like the idea. Yeah. Uh, but 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 sh her character reminds me of like a paladin from like from like D and D. A little bit, yeah. Oh, she has a code. She upholds it, and ev and her code is above all else. Yeah. So her code isn't quite as. Uh, I mean, paladin tends to be more like lawful good, whereas uh, her code. Um. Uh, what, what would you say hers is? I have no idea. Like well, because her her alignment. Um. I think her, her code her, can call for the. Her seems to be just lawful. Yeah, like lawful neutral maybe. Like she, she's got a code that she follows um, completely, but at the same time, um, her code isn't always. Uh, you know, her code might, might compel her to kill instance in order to, um, in order to reach her tar uh, her target or something. Like for yeah. example, when you first meet her, how she's um, being watched by um, by, by a, a, like an officer of the law, yeah. and she says that like she. 
that she can stay um, uh, captive for like 24 hours, but then she'll, have to, she'll be forced, she'll be compelled to like break free and um, yeah, yeah, she, kill she, anyone she, who gets in her way. Like, 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 like she could be there, for, she, she could be there for one day, and then and after that she has to leave. And it's like, it's like, it's like it won't be that easy for you to leave. And it's just like, it's like then I will fight my way out. Yeah. Something if the code compels her to do that, I don't know if that means like the code, um, like she can't control the compulsion or like she just uh, follows that the code with the. Uh, yeah, she just follows the code. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyways. So yeah, um, Samara, I I dig. Yeah, she's a cool <laughs> character. Yeah. yeah. Actually, on my most recent playthrough, um, I've told you, but I don't know if I've mentioned it on the podcast. I've been playing through the Mass Effect trilogy again. Uh. uh for like the fourth or fifth time at this point. Okay. Because <clears throat> I realized that. Uh, I've never actually finished, uh, I played 1 and 2 as a uh, FemShep a couple times, but I never actually, for some reason, finished 3 as a uh, FemShep. So I oh, want no. to actually go all the way through. Okay. I, I think it's because I, when I first started, played Mass Effect, uh, 1 and 2 were already out. So I played all the way up through 1 and 2 as uh, my main character, you know, doing what I would do. Mm-hmm. And then, like, and Mass Effect 3 wasn't out yet, that wasn't coming out for another year or two. Mm-hmm. And I, I was just like, I want more Mass Effect, so I started a, a, a FemShep character on, in Mass Effect 1. So when Mass Effect 3 came out, I had, uh, had two characters ready to import immediately. <laughs> and I, I finished with uh, my, my first character, and then I, a little bit later, I came back and started playing as uh, uh, my second character, but for some reason, I didn't finish. Like, maybe another game came out, or maybe I lost it just because I had just played the game. Yeah. Anyways, so, I think that's enough time, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't have an exact timer, but it's been about 40 minutes. I, I don't mean to be like, I don't mean to be like, yeah, we're done to stop, but no. Like, yeah. I'm, we're kind of out of ideas. If you guys have any suggestions that you want that you want for our next podcast, I mean, by all means, do it. We, we generally could come up with these on our own, um, but yeah, you know, if, uh, if you guys want, want, some, want to hear about something on your next podcast, by all means, let us know. Yeah, and please leave comments if you're listening this far, because it's reassuring to know that someone's listening. Yeah, it's it, even if it's just background noise, it's fantastic. Anyways, yeah. thank you everybody so much for being here with us. Yep, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> My name is Zathos. And I'm Solanima. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.